What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Anik. I'm a classical pianist and today I would like to do a little analysis and interpretation session with you on the first ballad by Frédéric Chopin. Of course one video is not enough to talk about everything so I will try to focus really just on a few bars like the first seven bars of this piece. For this analysis part there will be some music theory. I will try to explain it so everyone can understand it but maybe a little bit knowledge about music theory will help. Now why am I doing this stuff? I mean analysis, music theory, ugh, boring stuff right? <laughs> when I was younger I thought this is something so boring and I never really understood why I need to do this. Now after you know <laughs> a couple of years of studying I finally understand and I'm, I'm really really interested in this now because it makes such a huge difference in my understanding of the piece and in my interpretation. Before I learned how to analyze and interpret things I thought that I just need to <laughs> listen to what my instinct says let's say <laughs> but this is by far not enough to create a convincing interpretation of a piece. Through all these years I got very very fascinated into all this analyzing and interpreting interpreting topic. So I would like to take you with me into a very big and important part of my daily work, which I think is extremely exciting and it makes a lot of fun to get into all these details. So what are we going to analyze today? There are some basic parameters that we are analyzing, which are melody, harmony, dynamics, rhythm, articulation and form. And in this video I'll try to go through all these parameters. Again, of course, I can't go into all the details. This would be way too much for one video. However, However, I'll try to put all the things that I found out on my Patreon, so for everyone who is interested in more details, please check out the link in my description box. Now let's get started. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, before we get started with the analysis, let's just listen to the first seven measures. So, as I said before, we have different parameters to analyze. Melody, harmony, dynamics, rhythm, articulation, form. We can start with any of these parameters. Let's get started with the melody. There are a couple of things that you would focus on when you're analyzing the melody. One of this is the direction of the melody upwards, downwards, staying on one line. The next thing is the size of the intervals. Are these jumps or just little steps? And how many voices do we have? Well, the last question, how many voices, is pretty obvious. We have two voices. Right and left hand are playing each one voice. The special thing here is they are playing actually the same thing, just with a distance of one octave. This is called unisono. Now to the direction of the melody. We are starting on a very deep register of the piano and then we are moving upwards to a quite high register over one, two, three, four, over four octaves. So we are creating already like a very, very big frame here in only two measures. And then it's going slowly downwards in five measures. The size of the intervals. In the beginning, like in these two measures where the melody is going very, very high, we are going in bigger steps and you can see that there are fifth in this melody. Afterwards the intervals are getting much smaller. We have a lot of chromatic stuff going on. So this is the melody analysis. Before we go into the interpretation of this let's continue with the analysis of the other parameters. The next one is harmony. The harmony here is extremely interesting because we do not really know where we are. Chopin starts here with a C, like it's, it's just an empty octave. It does not give any 
hint to like the bass key that we are in. It could be C major, it could be C minor, it could be F major or F minor or A minor or something completely else. With the next two notes, E flat and A flat, you could think that we are in A flat major. Plus a B flat, which is creating like a special color in this harmony, which would sound like this. Now, in measure three, there is this G coming into the game. The G could be just the leading note to A flat, but then he would have to continue differently, like this. However, he's continuing with the B flat, and here it's like the first hint that we might be in G minor. However, you do not really know if this is the right direction, because again, it's it's not so clear for the listener. We had the B flat before, it was just like an extra note, which is like giving an extra color, but in this case, if this would really be G minor, then it has a completely different function and a different meaning. Then he goes on, from the G into the F sharp. F sharp in A flat major <laughs> is extremely strange, you know? It's, it's, uh, it has nothing to do with A flat major anymore. <laughs> so F sharp is the leading note to G minor. So again, here is another hint or like a, a more precise hint that is going in the direction of G minor. However, we still don't have clarity about the harmony. Everything is now completely confusing for the audience. Before I thought I'm in A flat major. Now everything is just a big question. I don't know where I am. Confusion of the highest order. And he continues using this unisono thing, which makes it very, very difficult for the audience to orientate where are we harmonically. So he tries to play a little bit with the audience and confuse the audience so everything is not really really clear to them. And the first time that we really get a clear harmony is in measure 6 where Chopin writes the first time a clear chord in C minor. So G minor was the key that we were aiming for, that we were searching for. It's a long search and uh, like a lot of questions coming up in just these seven measures. So these are the basics about the harmonies. Let's continue with the dynamics. We start in forte. In measure three, we have a diminuendo. In measure four, we have a piano. Forte piano is already like quite big contrast and then he stays in piano like there is no other um, dynamic written for a very very long time until measure 48 I oh, know it's not true until measure 40 so from measure 4 until measure 40 there is not a lot of change in dynamics but during these first four measures, there is already a big change from forte to piano. This goes hand in hand with the analysis and interpretation of the harmony that we did before. So we are starting very confident with the forte on the C. Then there start to be all these extra notes in measure three, which make us already feel a little bit insecure. Are we really sure that we are in this key. No, we are not. And there's this diminuendo which makes us feel this insecurity. Then there is this rest from measure three to measure four, so complete silence. And then we are continuing in a piano, which is creating like this feeling as if everything we heard was a lie and we do not dare to speak loud anymore. Like, is this is this right what I'm saying? Is it not right what I'm saying? And this is like this kind of piano color that I would like to create here. In 
the next parameter that I would like to analyze is the rhythm together with pulse and tempo. So we're starting in Largo later after the seven first measures we are continuing in Moderato and we have a four quarter time, a common time. And later in the Moderato part, we are getting into a six quarter time. There is a big difference between these two types of counting. Four quarter time means it's, it's a little bit more, let's say, edgy. Like for example, a march is also written in four quarter and a six quarter time is a little bit more round. It's more like dancing. It's a little bit more flowing, let's say. So this four quarter time is creating a little bit more heaviness, which is also like supporting this pesante feeling, which Chopin also writes in the beginning of this piece. Now let's go into the length of the notes that are written here, like the rhythm. You can see we have some special things going on. At first, everything is very clear, except of the first note, we only have eighth note, no dotted notes, nothing special happening. In measure four, we have a rest on the first beat. And we are starting on a syncope. Syncopes are always something special because they are creating a special impulse to the next note that is coming. In measure four, uh, we have the first triplet. In measure five, we have the first dotted note together with triplets. These triplets are actually already preparing for the moderato part, like this more flowing feeling of one, two, three, four, five, six, which is like kind of this triplet feeling. Then this long note in the left hand in measure six, it's uh, together with a harmony starting to give us a direction, something to hold on. Okay, what do we have now? Melody, harmony, dynamic rhythm. Let's go to articulation. Well, everything you can see here is legato. Legato means singing, legato means breathing. If you want to create this type of sound on the piano, you can't just use the finger legato in my opinion. But we are not talking about technique here now. Everything I can say about this is check out this video if you're interested in what I think about legato, because I don't want to say too much about this topic. This form here is very, very free. It feels like an improvisation, but you can put it into like three measures plus two measures plus two measures because of the big rests in between. But there are also other possibilities to think about the form here. Now, we analyze the piece. We have the basic analysis of these first seven measures. How are we going to interpret this now? Actually, I already started to interpret things during the analysis. And I think one thing that is very obvious that I did already mention a couple of times in my analysis is insecurity. Chopin is creating a lot of insecurity in these first measures. It feels like he wants to confuse the audience. We do not really know where we are. Maybe we are in this key, maybe we're in that key. I don't know where we are going to. This is basically what I think he wants to express here. Now, there are different ways to interpret things. To interpret a piece, we have also different tools. The main tools are the dynamic, the timing, and the color. I'm not going to talk about like all the different techniques, like how am I creating dynamics, how I'm creating timing and so on. We are just talking about how do I use these tools to create an interpretation. As we analyzed, we have two voices. One is one octave deeper than the other. If you want to create this pesante feeling, we have the option to put more attention on the deeper voice, which would create a very dark and heavy color. And when we go upwards, we can change the weight between our arms so the right hand gets more weight. So the difference between shadow and light is created through like balancing the different voices. I would like to try to show you how this interpretation could sound like, and I hope you can hear the difference in the recording. We have the forte in the beginning, 
And we are continuing with the piano. Now you can say we want to stay on this one piano level or we are going to like move a little bit in this piano. I would like to do a little diminuendo during the measure four and five. So you can really feel how the melody is going down. Not only like the direction of the melody is going downwards, but also the dynamic is going downwards. And then in measure six, when we have finally a chord and when it finally gets like a direction, I would create a little bit more again, like maybe a mezzo piano or something like this. So we can feel uh, here we have a direction now. I know where I want to go now, which could sound like this. Another tool that we use uh, for the interpretation is the timing. How much time can I give myself to go to the next note? And as I said before, Chopin kind of wants to create this insecurity. Now we can try to exaggerate this feeling by like giving us much more time on long notes, on the rest, um, to create like this instability in the pulse and like to really create a tension in the silence. However, there could also be another opinion on this topic, which says, well, he's already creating so much insecurity and everything seems to fall apart in these first seven measures. Now we actually need to stay in the tempo. So it does not fall apart even more because it's, it's the beginning of the piece. And if like everything is already falling apart in the beginning, how do you want to continue afterwards? I could talk hours and hours and hours about this topic and it would still not be enough and we would still not go into all the details that I would like to talk about. However, I hope I could show you how exciting this whole world of analyzing and interpretation is and give you a little insight into my daily work. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments down below. Also, please give me some feedback about this type of videos. This was the first time that I, I was trying to do this. If you would like to see this on another piece, please put your suggestions in the comments down below and I'll try to analyze and interpret it with you together. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. We'll see us in the next videos.